Welcome back to New World Next Week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com. 3D gun printing takes Manhattan. We've got that story, plus busting one of mainstream media's regime change proxies. But first, we continue the lengthy New World Next Week tradition of covering the coming drone takeover. Our first story this week, Greece uses high-tech drones to fight tax evasion in holiday hotspots via Rothschild Reuters. Greece is using drones to buzz over boats running day trips on the Aegean at the start of a new effort aimed at cracking down on rampant tax evasion at holiday hotspots. With the black economy, by some accounts, representing about a quarter of national output in a country which depends hugely on tourism, Greek authorities are turning to high-tech to stamp out undeclared earnings. Finance, ministry, tax inspectors, and the Coast Guard launched the drones project on Santorini, an island popular with tourists, to check on whether operators offering short day trips were issuing legal receipts to all of their passengers. Based on the data from the drones, authorities were able to establish how many passengers were on board, then cross-referenced it with the declared receipts and on-site inspections. It sounds like a lot of work. We used the drones for the first time on an experimental basis to monitor how many tourists were on board. The results were excellent, said an official at the Independent Authority for Public Revenue. Nine tourist vessels checked were alleged to have not issued a number of receipts, totaling about $25,000, bucks. Their owners now face fines. And this article ends by noting tourism is a much-needed motor of growth and tax revenue for the economy, accounting for about a fifth of the Greece gross domestic product. I like how the story doesn't feign some sort of won't somebody think of the children angle or helping confuse seniors. It's just about money. James. And that's what it is about, isn't it? And uh, this is, I think, the perfect encapsulation of the idea that we are moving into the era where technology is going to create the perfect global ch tax grid and you're not going to escape it. Of course, all the corporate cronies at the top of the system who buy their politicians and have them in the back pocket will be able to get out, you know, the legal way through whatever loopholes that they get to write into the legislation to make sure that they're exempted. But you and your, you know, $20 that you didn't declare on your taxes is going to get found out somehow or other by drones or, or other types of newfangled technologies. And I guess... Let's at least look at the half glass half full aspect of this. For all the technologies that they roll out to make that global tax grid even tighter, there will be technological counters to this. And who knows even what forms that will take. There will always be a way out of that. I mean, at some point you'll be hacking into the drones to insert deep fakes into their live feeds so that it looks like there's only seven passengers when there's actually 33 or whatever. I mean, I don't know, but use your imagination. There will always be some sort of technological way around this and it's always a cat and mouse and I guess that's something uh, hopeful about this in some sense but yeah no unfortunately for the average person and the average person without the access to the technological resources it's going to get harder and harder and harder to participate in the good old gray and black markets as they've always existed so um, keep that in mind the uh, the government hates your ability to transact freely with people around you and will do anything at all, including putting up drones and whatever else to insert itself into that equation. Or like as the saying goes, those who don't have the capital get the punishment. I'll include a related story I actually covered a couple of months back on a Good News Next Week episode about how black markets matter. An interesting piece, and again, we're talking about, of course, Greece specifically. My related story is talking about the U.S. specifically. United States shadow economy has positive yet hidden impact on crime. An interesting bit about how in the Great Recession that we're, of course, still swimming in, people didn't actually turn to crime as they have in the past when economies crash because there are so many other options. The gig economy, the sharing economy, they can call it what they want, but it is really that sort of shadow economy. James, our second story this week, I think, starts with another headline that might not end the way you'd expect. I didn't really expect Greece uses high-tech drones to fight tax evasion to actually be the story. So our second story, Lion King puppet technician arrested after allegedly printing 3D gun at New York City Theater. See, you thought it was going to be about Pedagate stuff. Via National Propaganda Radio, a puppet technician with the Broadway production of The Lion King was using a 3D printer to print a gun at the theater. 
Officers were called to Manhattan's Men's Golf Theater on Friday where they said they found 47-year-old puppet technician Ilya Vett, V-E-T-T, in the process of printing a handgun. Printed guns have been in the headlines recently, as NPR notes, as several states moved to block a Texas-based company from posting and selling plans for guns online. Ilya Vett was arrested and charged with attempted criminal possession of a firearm. According to the criminal complaint, he told a detective he was making a gun as a gift for his bro who lives upstate in New York and has <clears throat> has a firearms license because it pleases the crown. That was released Saturday and his case adjourned until November 7th. That would be the day after midterm selections here in the States if you're keeping score. His, his attorney, of course, declined to comment. Interestingly enough, the New York Daily News, which is included in the source notes, reports that Ilya Vett was losing his job at the Lion King anyway, and that security found the printer and partially printed gun while assisting him in clearing out his things, which is a corporate euphemism for armed guards making sure you don't steal any valuable office supplies while they're throwing you out of the building. NPR, which is, it's funded by the American government? That sounds kind of sketchy, I don't know. They requested a comment from Disney, the Monsanto of media companies, which owns every single form of popular corporate culture, Mm, it was not returned phone call. So is there a way, you ask, that how could we cram more rage click issues into one story? Well, I think some of our longtime audience already know where this will head. Owner of Texas 3D Gun Company accused of sex with minor. And he has now, of course, resigned from the company he was heading and that we talked about, of course, just a few several weeks ago here as a cover story on New World Next Week. James, as this story was starting to break, as we'll start to see the themes and memes of media malfeasance in this New World Next Week episode, Courthouse News, which is a source that I generally find decent coverage, but it's like lots of places kind of slipping down the trail. Courthouse News drops journalistic pretense of presumed innocence, immediately calls Cody Wilson child sexual assaulter upon arrest. And at least their reporter admitted it when I actually called him out for not using that. And he deleted the tweet and tried again. I, of course, have the screen grab, which we'll include, of course, in the production of this video, James. I thought for sure that headline, Lion King Puppet Technician, because, of course, it revolves around Disney and things. I, I thought it was probably going to be about child abuse, but it's about 3D guns, which reminds us of another story about child abuse if this makes any sense please help us out james yeah well yeah and all of these things are kind of swirling around and getting a bit smeared together like it's all one thing right so if you were into 3d printed guns you know what else you must be into right so yeah um i think we see how these smears work and isn't it interesting timing on the cody wilson indictment and arrest isn't it i mean just literally weeks after after a years-long struggle with the state department in the courts finally winning the right to put these 3D printed gun plans online and then getting sued by every single state attorney general and then getting arrested for child sexual assault is the headline, of course. And then if you actually look into the indictment, it's about a prostitute that was apparently trying to pass herself off as 18, but she wasn't and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I have no idea about whether these this indictment is... Uh, real or, you know, the allegations are real or what's going on. And I don't claim to have any sort of insider knowledge. As people know, I never got my interview with Cody Wilson. So who knows? But um, if people are interested in the story and kind of the breakdown of the indictment and what was in there and the allegations and blah, 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 uh, there was a really uh, good conversation on the Declare Your Independence uh, radio show recently between Ernie Hancock and Davi Barker and there was someone else sitting in there um, where they went through it, a three-hour podcast, breaking down, you know, what is this and what does it mean and everything. So I'll throw that in the show notes for people to listen to. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, clearly the intended effect of all of this is a presumption of guilt, as you say, courthouse news. No allegation, no indictment, just this is a child sexual assaulter, right? And then also, yes, yeah, smearing all these kinds of concepts together so that, yeah, if you're inter interested in 3D printing guns or 3D printing technology at all, maybe, then, you know, you must be interested in child sexual assaults. It's all the same thing. And it's, it's all evil, and you must be arrested if you're found printing a physical object. I mean, think about the, the, the ultimate implications of this, that if you go so much as take your 3D printer and print an object that's outlawed by the government, then you're going to get arrested for it. 
crazy stuff. Crazy stuff when you think about it. It is just a physical object, but here we go. We're going into the wild and wacky world. So um, yeah, I think we see how the smear campaign is working and it's starting to group a bunch of things together that have nothing to do with each other. Um, and here it is. Here is the choice. Here's here's the the technology that makes the whole Second Amendment de debate moot. Because it doesn't matter what the government says you can or cannot do if you physically control your own 3D printer in your own home and make your own gun. But uh, on the other, other side of that, we have the big campaign starting to demonize this technology before it even gets going. James, as I, as I usually do, I, of course, you know, edit, edit down and truncate some of the articles to put them in a bite-sized form that we can talk about them here in 15 minutes on Neural next week. But in this case of this NPR article, a lot of the stuff that I edited out – it's it's almost hilarious how they talk about the minutia of it. Well, when we walked into the room, the 3D printer was in action and it appeared to be printing the butt of a gun. When I walked into the room, it's just, again, it's this, it, it's the crazy sort of language that makes it, it, it makes it seem normal when you talk about all the things this way. And that's what it's all about. That sort of normalization of all of that. Whew. Our final story on Neural Next Week, episode 353, is good news if you consider exposing geopolitical black ops a good thing, which I, I think we do. How an American anthropologist tied to U.S. regime change proxies became the MSM's man in Nicaragua. The Guardian, The Washington Post, the BBC, and the aforementioned NPR have assigned an American anthropologist – with no previous journalistic experience to cover the crisis in Nicaragua. The novice reporter named Carl David Goet Lusiak has published pieces littered with falsehoods that reinforce the opposition's narrative promoting regime change while relying almost entirely on anti-Sandinista sources. An investigation for Mint Press reveals that Goet Lusiak has forged intimate ties to the opposition, essentially functioned as a publicist under journalistic cover. Having claimed to work in the past as an anthropologist and human rights defender, Goet Lusiak operated side by side with activists from a U.S. backed opposition party known as the Sandinista Renovation Movement, or MRS. As this Mint Press investigation seems to show, U.S. government funded organizations have supplied the MRS with millions of dollars worth of election assistance and continues to fund its activists by funding their NGOs, their non governmental organizations. And of course, don't forget the very important social media training. Go at Lusiak now lists himself as director of investigations for an obscure outlet called Radio Ciudadana that was founded a whole month before the chaos erupted in Nicaragua last April. And in a recently deleted podcast interview, because that's what you always do, he's described his own work as encouraging opposition. So media outlets like The Guardian, NPR, and the CIA's favorite newspaper, The Washington Compost, feign objectivity before their readers, especially in the last two years, presenting themselves as arbiters of truth in an era of fake news. However, in the numerous countries where Washington's pushing regime change, they're the same outlets that dispatch a core of writers to embed with U.S.-backed opposition elements, provide them with publicity, and sell their goals back to the American public as Mint Press writes. That's just essentially just sort of the intro to their giant investigation. Goet Lusiak is one of the clearest embodiments of a disturbing trend. So the last couple of notes here, James. Carl David Goet Lusiak is on Twitter at CD Goet Lusiak. And actually, in the prepping of this, I went to GooTube to see if I could just find someone saying his name so I could pronounce it maybe correctly and not mangle it. What I found instead was a video titled, after I translated it, Carl David Goet Lusiak, CIA agent in the dams in Nicaragua. And one of the comments on the videos translates to, so we are all willing to denounce him wherever we see him. James? Yeah, well, I think this one will be our uh, our weekly, well, no surprise here story. <laughs> um, but it's uh, interesting because I had no idea that this 
this guy was doing this because I don't go to The Guardian or The Washington Post or the BBC or NPR for my news on Nicaragua or any other geopolitical matter of import. So maybe that's the ultimate solution to this in the long run is to not go to those controlled corporate media la- ma- mouth dog, uh, mouthpiece lapdog organizations for your news and then you don't have to worry about these embedded reporters. But uh, having said that, again, yeah, no surprise. It There is a very, very long history of journalists journalists working with intelligence agencies to propagate stories um, about whatever country you want to demonize um, and there I've gone through that many times in the past so people can check into my archives about the CIA and the media and all of that um, but here's a, it's great to, to expose this as it is happening about a story that is currently happening so that we can effectively guard against it and as you say you just covered the intro to this extremely thorough report uh, up on Mint Press News and they link also to a report on greyzoneproject.com US government meddling machine boasts of laying the groundwork for insurrection in, in Nicaragua which provides even more context of this story as it's unfolding so here we go we can counter the misinformation as it is coming out and expose the CIA operation or the uh, deep state operation um, as it's happening. So great. We we are the alternative. We are doing it now in real time, even as these propaganda narratives are being fed out. And can you imagine doing that 30, 40, 50 years ago? I mean, you'd just be reading the New York Times or whatever. And well, there it is. There's the only report I'm going to see on Nicaragua this week. And um, I guess that's that must be the truth. Well, no, now we have different ways of coming at it. So this is ultimately a positive thing. And uh, just heads up, uh, people can take a look out for this uh, reporting that's going to be coming out about Nicaragua from this journalist, quote unquote. James, I'm, I'm not proud of it. But earlier today, I was watching the live Trump press conference in New York, I guess, after the UN General Assembly thing, he gives this whole combative press conference with, of course, with the fake news media. One of the guys that he actually calls on and says, oh, Radio Marti, CIA connected me. It's just a funny, like you can just watch even a little bit of it. And if you've done a little bit of homework, you go, oh, that's intelligence connected. It's just liars interviewing liars. And it's just, it's a little stunning. Um, as long as we're talking about media stuff, James, I want to include a link to your latest Propaganda Watch episode. Meet James Corbett, political extremist. I know you've long left the tweets, but uh, MSNBC's Chris Hayes and others, of course, have been trying to take you to task. And we'll include that in the show notes because I think it kind of means we might be having some kind of effect so, James, just in closing, as I always like to say, I stream news, music, and memes, and more Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 Pacific Time at MediaMonarchy.com slash listen. There is a big new Media Monarchy website in the works. It's kind of just out of testing. It's trying to kick the tires and get it going on as, again, we are talk about all of these different elements, and I was even just – tweeting with someone earlier who was complaining about YouTube demonetizing them. I was like, dude, why, why keep asking bastards to be nice? Go somewhere else. And we'll just keep saying it, James. <laughs> All right. On that note, uh, looking forward to talking to you again next week. All right, buddy. Thank you. Take care. Evasion. I don't say evasion. I say avoidance.